a good place to start is something that sounds like parts in a tube. And it's hard to see through the tube. I usually get op amps. LT1054, finally under the right magnifier, I could see it with light. So assuming the part is either genuine or a working clone, that would be a switched capacitor converter chip compatible with something like a Max 1044 or 7660, which I use to make negative supply rails out of positive rails. This is supposed to be a better performing version. So for example, with the Max 1044, the thing I liked about that one compared to the 7660, I was able to make sure the switching frequency of the converter was up somewhere above 20 kilohertz. But the thing I didn't like about Max 1044, the absolute maximum input voltage was 10.5. But this one can have 15 volts in. So if I'm working with plus nine, I have more headroom there. And also this can do 100 milliamps max current, which is way more than those other devices can do. This I ordered recently, and it came fast with choice delivery. Max 9814 microphone amplifier with auto gain control. Looks like I got two of those. So it's a module with an electric microphone and the preamp circuit. And I got that because when I was working on this lo-fi sampler, I was using this other electric microphone amplifier module, but without auto gain. So I wanted to see how this one would work because it can help normalize the difference in quiet or loud volumes keep things under control. I'll have to see how well that performs, but I'm sure I can use it for many different things anyway, so I got a couple of them to get started and see how they go. And while I was ordering microphone and audio related stuff, I threw in an order for another MEMS microphone, which is an I2S interface. I had bought several versions of these to experiment with years ago, you can use them easily with ESP32. So now I have five more of a certain style. It was either the cheapest or the most readily available at the time I was ordering. And I recall these were relatively easy to get up and running and sounded reasonably good. So we have our module on the top of the board, an opening there for the microphone audio, power ground and the I2S data pins, word select, left or right channel, clock, and data. There's libraries out there easily allowing these to get up and running. So depending what I do, maybe if I'm doing some other lo-fi sampler, I can use a MEMS microphone as well. This has been in the mail queue for I don't even know how long. Many months. This is called a fret rocker. It's got four different, hopefully true, straight, flat edges. And it's related to guitar fret work, which I'll try to quickly illustrate. But first, something that I know has a true straight edge because I put a level against it. It's not going to be easy to show on camera, but I can see that's perfectly flat looking. I'm not seeing daylight through where these two surfaces meet. So for now, I'll assume that's good straight edges. So these are the metal wire frets and you want the height of all of these frets to be level on the same plane so that when you push down a string, for example here, you don't want any frets further up to be too tall because you're trying to push the string down against the fret to make a note. But if a fret up here is too tall, the string may be hitting against here instead of down where you want. So you just want all the frets at the same height all the way along. And that's what a fret rocker is for. So you find whatever edge will fit across any three frets. As you go up the neck, the frets get closer together, so you need to switch to a different edge. So if you're checking if this fret is too high, 
you want to put this edge across the fret before and after the one you're looking at. So this edge will fit across three. So you just put it there and rock it and see if you can hear any tapping noise, meaning one of the frets is either too high or too low. So you go along and see if everything is solid. And if anything is too tall, you need a fret file to take the tall ones shorter, polish them and so on and keep going until they're all level. And of course, there were some recent sales. So I went on Amazon for a couple of those budget brand guitar pedals. This Tsunami is a blues overdrive and the Twister is an analog flanger. I've got several from this series, so I decided to keep trying them out. Don't need instructions. Plug it in and make noise. And just looking to make sure they work with nothing on. Blues Overdrive. Turning up the gain. Tone. Seems to control the tone. Volume. Bright and normal switch. It's on bright, so normal. Probably can't tell much on a small speaker, but it's working. Now this flanger. I have a feeling this might be the same circuit as another one I've already got because we have the same color control here and a toggle switch currently set for freeze. It can also be on normal, so I don't know what freeze is. Let's see. I think what Freeze seems to be doing, we have a range here which I guess controls a sweep of the effect you hear. When it's on Freeze and I have this range set somewhere, I get a certain background position of the sweep frozen in space. So if I put it on normal, does color do? It adds color. It's either some kind of depth or intensity. So maybe it's a feedback control which controls how intense it gets. They work, so I'll add them to the collection of noise-making accessories. Thanks to supporters of the channel for helping make all this possible.